Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now whenever I test an Intel Arc card, I always mention resizable bar or rebar and how it's important to have a system that supports it to get optimal performance from Intel's desktop GPUs. It can be enabled from within a supported motherboard's BIOS and may also be listed as resize bar, smart access memory or clever access memory depending on your setup. You'll also need to enable the above 4G decoding option. Here are the officially supported hardware configurations listed on Intel's website. To check rebar is working in a compatible system you can right click on the graphics card in device manager, go to properties, resources and you should see large memory range. Alternatively download and open up GPU-Z and check the sizable bar box says enabled. So what is it? Well I found that the Gigabyte website offers a simple and concise explanation. Resizable bar is an optional PCI Express interface technology. Using resizable bar, assets can instead be requested as needed and sent in full so the CPU can efficiently access the entire frame buffer. With that, let's look at why you might want to avoid an ARC card if you have an older PC. In other words, a system without resizable bar support. Now the i5 machine I have does support rebar but I've purposely disabled it for this test so that we have a fair comparison against the card with rebar enabled and another entry level GPU, the GTX 1630. Now when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, well this is reduced to a bit of a stuttery mess with rebar disabled, averaging just 38 FPS with a 1% low of 25 and a 0.1% low of 14. When we had rebar enabled we were seeing 46 FPS with a 1% low of 37 and a 0.1% low of 36 so it was a lot more consistent. In Fallout 4, the average FPS with rebar off was just 50 with a 1% low of 28 and a 0.1% low of 18. So again, a lot more stutters here and there. With rebar enabled, of course, we were seeing 56, so a slightly better average with improved percentile figures that meant a smoother experience, especially in those more demanding in-game zones. The Witcher 3 lost about 6 or 7 FPS with rebar turned off, but once again, it was with those percentile figures where we really saw problems. 24 was that 1% figure and the 0.1% low was 13. So this is a massive difference uh, from the 41 and 39 that we saw previously. Red Dead Redemption 2 still looks great I feel with the ultra settings and everything else set to low but the performance wasn't so great with 42 FPS in and around Saint Denis and a 1% low of 26. This was followed by a 0.1% low of 21 down from the 43 and 39 that we saw with rebar enabled. As you can see I've thrown up the GTX 1630 results for a comparison to another entry level card too and left those on screen. Finally we have Starfield, I mean this ran pretty poorly anyway with rebar enabled at just 18 FPS with a 1% low of 15 and a 0.1% low of 14. With rebar disabled on the same configuration we saw a drop of 1 FPS with the average but look what's happened once again to those percentile numbers. They're not as bad as we've seen in terms of a drop compared to other games but there is still a noticeable difference and it does feel a little worse for it. But there we go. Nvidia and AMD cards can also benefit from this feature but it's with ARC cards that the differences may be at their most substantial. These differences will also vary on a card by card basis. That said, with an entry level option like the A310 here, the performance differences between rebar being on and off could mean a finer line between playable and unplayable frame rates. This is why you may want to avoid an ARC graphics card if you have a system that does not support resizable bar. Hopefully this will be helpful to any of you looking at purchasing an ARC card. It's old news really but I wanted to try out the differences on this new entry level GPU and hopefully it will be useful to some of you. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.